Hi, I'm Am Angel, and today I'm here to review Seven Seconds, a 2018 Netflix original drama series. Shout out to the creator Vina Sood, who also produced and directed The Killing, another show on Netflix I never had the chance to look at, but it's crime, it's drama, it's the same kind of feel, I think. So if you liked The Killing, I think you're gonna like Seven Seconds. Now, original Netflix series are a mixed bag of tricks. They're either really satisfying and fantastic or greatly disappointing and you're just like, huh, why? Who's watching this, right? Those people at Netflix, they spend their time analyzing data, checking what people are watching, what works, what doesn't, what gets followed, what gets watched. With this show, I basically feel like they took all all those popular Twitter threads and mush them together and thought let's create a series that all the girls will enjoy. So basically if you like true crime or just crime shows in general, CSI, Law and Order, this will align with you because we have so many subjects touched upon in this show. Now if you read the synopsis it says after the death of a young black boy Drama ensues. Yes, well, you don't really know from the first episode that that kid's gonna die. So thank you Netflix for that spoiler, but I get it. That's not where the cliffhanger was lying. There are so many other cliffhangers. Maybe I should start by saying overall, I really enjoyed the show. First two episodes, I was, you know, dipping my toe in it. I wasn't sure if I wanted to watch it. It was actually recommended to me by a friend, a fellow MGN friend. Thank you, Andrea. But a few episodes in, I was hooked. I wanted to know what's gonna happen, how is this gonna unfold, and how are the people involved going to deal with the situation? This show reminded me of The Night Of, so if that's a show you like, an HBO series, it has a lot of the same feel and beats to it, but it reminded me primarily of the show American Crime. You had a lot of the topics that that show covered through various seasons in one season. You get crime, right? First and foremost. Then we talk about sexism in the office, racism in the office, prejudice, racism in law enforcement, racism in the American judicial system and how that plays a role. Also sexism in the judicial system, child neglect, you have drugs. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of The Wire at some point. Drugs in communities, low income communities and how that affects them. Race and drug relations. You have the army and how veterans just ain't getting no respect. We have religion and how that peppers in. You even have sexuality that comes in, religion and sexuality and family and race and everything kind of intermingles and connects with each other. Black lives matter, blue lives matter. Even the way dogs are treated at shelters and neglected is brought up. You have a lot of topics brought up in this show. Some people may mind thinking you're a bit ambitious here. You're going for a lot in one season, but when you look at the nature of life, thus is life, right? A lot of things happen at once. People say and do things and they don't really give a second thought to the motive until after the fact most of the time. Visually, the show is, mm, I don't know, dark. It has that like Christopher Nolan kind of crushed white. The highlights are blue tinted, the exposure is low. Some of the scenes, they crush the colors in a way that just didn't work. But overall, it's very polished, very gorgeous to look at, a bit House of Cardsy in the unsaturated feel, muted, which works with the tone, I guess. Filming wise, editing wise, everything was on point. I have nothing to say there. It was a well executed show. I had no issue with the scripts, except maybe there was one or two like Scooby-Doo scenes as I call them where detectives are piecing together things. Huh, this thing happened, but why did that thing happen? And why does that person have that item? If you put those thoughts together, bingo, Eureka, you have a new idea. That's the criminal, get him. But overall, the script isn't didactic or heavy handed in trying to convey a message or teach any lessons. It just shows you certain realities and then you can draw the conclusions that you want. Then there's the acting, the actors themselves and the characters. I would say this is where this show shines. I really appreciated how all of the characters could have easily been caricatures of themselves or stereotypes but they weren't. A lot of the characters sometimes went south when I thought they would go east and that was refreshing. It was refreshing. Everyone brought it. I really enjoyed the performances except for the father played by Russell Hornsby but that's just like a personal thing of mine. I've noticed that this actor and most of the things he does, he brings a very theatrical performance to movies and TV and I always just want to put him on a stage. I'm like, you are meant for the theater, dude. It's just his delivery. For me, it's very theatrical but maybe it's just the villains are good villains, the heroes are good heroes, nobody is black or white. 
no pun intended. And they keep you kind of guessing until the end. However, there were a lot of things that I predicted very early on. So if you're paying attention, even half so, and you know TV shows, you'll see certain beats and you'll know where the storyline is going. I do want to shout out Regina King, the mom in this situation, who played a great role, but maybe I'm also biased here because I love Regina King. She shined in American Crime and I think they saw that show and they're like, you know what, we're doing something similar, we need her. She really gave a grounded performance that moved me, that touched me, that I found believable. It was engrossing. Oh, and David Lyons plays D'Angelo and I'm not spoiling anything because after the first episode, you know this guy is not to be messed with. Like, he's just menacing. And he plays it so well. But what's fascinating about this character, and I'll get into it in the spoiler segment, he doesn't go where you expect him to go. He is not a caricature of the kind of cop you think he is. And another special shout out to Michael Mosley who plays Fish and I loved him. I think I developed like a sort of crush on him during the show, like he's just so good. At first you're like, who is this punk? Like he's kind of corny, but uh, he makes you fall for him in a certain way. I just loved his character. One of the best characters, I think, in the show. He really carries this season. I'd love to shout out everyone else, but it's so hard to get into the show and the characters without spoiling anything. So I think I'm just gonna wrap it up by saying, if you like The Night Of, if you like American Crime, if you like, I guess, The Killing, if you like The Good Wife even, The Wire, even Breaking Bad, I would say. If you like all these shows, I think you should give Seven Seconds a chance you would be pleasantly surprised. Oh, and Scandal. My girl KJ was giving me some serious Olivia Pope circa season five vibes, really. All right, I'm gonna move into the spoilers now cause we need to talk about a few things in depth. So like this video, subscribe to Music Game News and thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs> the spoils. Okay, my goodness, where to begin? So much to unpack here. Like I said, I loved Fish's character. He's so weird and quirky, but he's like a good guy, right? At first he says the wrong things and he's really brash, but he's just so himself, you know, just genuine, kind-hearted, good-natured. His relationship with Nadine was so interesting to watch, but kind of uncomfortable at times. I mean, girl was giving us layers of inappropriate in so many ways. Oh man, but what those guys did to her, that was, it broke my heart. I was hoping she would make it so much, but the show was like, nah, girl, you're gonna suffer through this. But when he was like, wait, a needle? Girl don't do needles. I was like, there you go. The little piece of the puzzle that you can't use in court, of course, right? But at least he knew they did this. Yes, Azario, you're gonna live with that forever. I just didn't get it. How can you choose your brothers in blue over yourself, right? Self love and respect. See, I can understand casual jokes about race and ethnicity. I went to an international school. I saw it all the time. It was all in good spirits because we all knew where we were coming from. But here it didn't feel like just childish jokes. It really felt like just plain ignorance and you're not even trying to learn. And I guess I was just hoping for more from Azario. Especially taking it from Wilcox. Wilcox of all people, that grown vanilla baby thug, like what? So going back to D'Angelo, like I said, I expected him to be like the departed mafia boss, you know? He's, he always said, I got it handled, I got this handled. But it was interesting to see how he actually didn't really know how to handle things, you know? He had a lot of loose threads. It was just a front. So it was refreshing to see the cracks and the flaws behind this character. The lawyer at the end, she says, oh yeah, that's how you like your men. You like them fatherless, boys, right? Because they'll look up to you and they'll trust you to handle things. I think Claire Hope Ashley did a good job with KJ. There wasn't anything really there to point at. Although, I don't know, I wasn't really hooked to this character. She really reminded me of Olivia Pope from Scandal, like I said. She had kind of the same issues, not being able to live up to daddy's standards, running away from her problem via alcohol, like really. Even the same hairstylist, apparently. But I don't know. She wouldn't have been much without Fish, really. He was the baking powder to her pancake batter. He arose her up. And she tried it with him. She tried to kiss him. I was like, girl, way too soon. But I'm glad that they kind of got that out of the way because that's like, always a thing, the dynamic between the leads, it has to be sexual. Will they, won't they, when will they, right? So they were just like, all right, this is what she does when she gets vulnerable and self-conscious. Let's use that to get that storyline out of the way because that's not what we want people to focus on. She tried it, he shut it down, boom. Now we could focus on them as partners. Although I did really want them to end up together because 
cute. So I wanted to touch on the Bretton Butler queer reveal that I saw coming from like a mile away. It was the moment Caduce, which I mean that name. <laughs> The moment Caduce appeared at the funeral, I knew. I was like, mm, something, connection. Maybe not, but something, something, something. Especially with that very religious father, I felt like that's a storyline they wanted to throw in there to add more controversy to the series. And I like the arc of the father going from unaccepting to opening up classic codependent, right? He takes care of other people his whole life and that's what gives him meaning, but he never really wants to. He feels responsible for everybody else's life and kind of holds it against them. He holds a grudge against them because he doesn't feel free. And we saw Latrice spiral, man. That grief process took her all sorts of places. Just imagining me losing my little brother, I was like, I understand everything she's going through. It is wrong, but justified, I get it. And I thought it was amazing of the brother to kind of have that moment with her where he's like, all right, you want to take a human out? Take this dog out first, see how that goes. You know, let's, let's test run this. Let's run it through a simulator. See how you do before we go into the field, you know? Gave her a dose of reality. The moment she stopped him from taking the dog out, I think it's when she realized that she can't do this. <laughs> it's not in her to take a life. She's a mama, she gives life. Bo Knapp plays Peter Jablonski, you know, the main character in all this. And his face, like, I just disliked him from get-go because he reminded me of someone that I really dislike. He played his character well, layered, wants to be a good guy, has good intentions, but screwed up since childhood, harbors a lot of anger in the eyes. It was there. There was just a heaviness to his eyes. I don't know if the actor went through some things in his personal life and he was drawing from that experience, but until the end, you know, where you're like, oh, boop, there we go, mic drop. You're not actually the good guy. You pretended so well to be. And in certain ways, he was actually kind of darker than D'Angelo because D'Angelo don't fake who he is. He wears his, his mean on his skin. And his girlfriend, Michelle Ventimiglia, playing Marie. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna chalk off her speech about my baby matters, not that woman's baby, to hormones and pregnancy hormones and going through labor and blah, 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 because <laughs> well, her little voice, her little childlike voice, I thought she's like a sweet little girl. She's gonna want justice. She's gonna tell him to do the right thing, you know? Nah, she was rough. Woo! But uh, luckily she turns around. I was proud of her. Maturity. And her cousin was extra, but I loved her. She also had an evolution that was really interesting. And I have to say, her conscience is one of the hugest heroes in this story. So thank you, girl, for your honesty. We needed it. And that's the thing about this show. It takes you through the motions, right? You have these highs of justice and these lows of injustice. <laughs> like the moment they were arrested, I was like, yay, party. Oh, the series must be over. I, <laughs> naive I was. I thought there were gonna be seven episodes because it's called Seven Seconds. I'm glad there were 10. And no, they were like, this is just the beginning. Hold your horses. We wanted to give you a little breather from all the injustice just for now. Now we're gonna step into the courtroom. Here we go. I forgot about the courtroom. Of course, that's where the injustice continues. So my tip to Americans would be um, people of color. Get into the legal system. Break in somehow. Become lawyers. Become judges. Judges especially. Become lawmakers because... This is where the change needs to happen. And I have to say, them protesters, they were kind of annoying. They all come with their own personal baggage of injustice. Some have nothing else to do, but this is not how you get things done by yelling all the time. It's like behind closed doors, you know, the room where it happens. Watch Hamilton. <laughs> I didn't see it. That's where things happen, you know? It's behind the doors. That's where real change takes place. I would say a, a nice, quiet, solidarity march is better to draw attention to a subject. But once you have that attention, you better have a game plan. And people, if you do not like taxes, let me remind you, do not ruin public property. Do not riot because you're paying for the damages. Coley Speaks plays Messiah, and I just wanted a brief note about him. He gave me the wire. He was clearly saying throughout the whole show, uh, don't hate the player, hate the game. However, the game doesn't exist without players. So it's like, it goes both ways, you know? But I get what he's saying. It's like, if it's not coming from me, someone else is gonna do it. But that argument just gets us 
more troublemakers instead of less so but at least he was a drug lord with a heart it was sad to see him go but he tried it i mean he pushed his luck <laughs> talking to a cop that way Mm. And just a note on Zachary Momo, who plays Seth Butler, he was also an interesting character to add to the mix. You know, he brought the family drama to another level, and he was speaking for veterans. And it's true that that's also an issue a lot of Americans need to talk about. It's like you're sending people off to war, but the war is back home. And he makes a good argument there where he's like, over there, I come home, I kill a bunch of foreigners, I'm a hero. I get killed by my own fellow man, and I'm a thug. So not many shows talk about that not so bluntly and clearly and even though it was a footnote in the whole list of things that the show was about I don't know it got to me and I hope more people talk about it and my last note would be the way the press is illustrated in this show they are just like the sharks of the world they're terrible paparazzi press reporters whatever you call them they're there to make money out of your pain that's how it's illustrated in this show. If there are any real reporters out there, y'all need to speak up and like do your job because you're not being painted positively. I mean, neither are the cops or judges or lawyers or anyone really in this show when you think about it in a broader perspective. So I'm not gonna generalize because it comes down to individuals. There's always good being done at a micro scale and that's what leads to macro change. So let's focus on the positives. Hey, I know this is kind of unprofessional, but I completely forgot to talk about the verdict of the season, which is kind of really important. And as I was putting the set away, I remembered, oh my gosh, I didn't even talk about that. Um, just one note I wanted to talk about because I think this is something maybe we should all discuss and comment section if you have any thoughts. The, yes, guilty for auto murder, whatever. Um, not guilty for a hate crime I actually agreed with and I had a really hard time to see how this was a hate crime in itself. Like, it really weighed on me. Like, this is a little extreme to find guilty of a hate crime. Hate is such a heavy word, right? Maybe if the cops saw some little angelic blonde boy with blue eyes lying in that ditch, he would have run down without thinking because he would have seen himself and he'd be like, oh no, what's wrong, little boy? People usually come to the defense of people who look like them. It's just like a personal bias but to go as far as saying it's because it was a black kid that he didn't go down there I don't know how they could leap to that conclusion I don't know that I was comfortable making that conclusion it's like how can you know that's purely speculative and there's nothing in his history that would point to him being biased in that way if anything I would say the culprit is the media social media and social climate in general because maybe he saw the kid he thought of himself as a cop he thought about the situation he thought about the consequences, the drama that will come from the situation, and that's maybe what made him freeze more so than his prejudice. And that's something I think we should all talk about and consider. How much is a climate where people are guilty until proven innocent contributing to these kind of situations escalating? Fear makes people do stupid, crazy things. And a lot of angry people are very quick to indict and social justice warriors, vigilantes out there taking justice into their own hands. It doesn't help for people who want to do the right thing to come forward because they're afraid of how it looks and not about the truth which is the problem in the legal system to begin with it's about what looks right not what is true you know so in that sense I felt like he was more guilty of being afraid and selfish and of just a coward just like his father in the end and not so much of like a hate crime I don't know I don't know what do you think I feel like I could keep talking but I think I've said enough about seven seconds and this did not take seven seconds it is your turn what did you think of seven seconds talk comment section below thank you for watching before you go like this video subscribe to music game news if you haven't already if you have turn on your notification bell I'm the angel signing off take care of yourself and your loved ones peace